Do good and evil exist? That is today's discussion. This is Ken Witt from the Pixel Posse team, and we'll be having some Friday Night Zen today. So, I have to ask, once again, does good and evil exist? I am talking the good and evil that you hear about in stories. A definitive bad and a definitive good, just right and wrong and the such. But I'm talking a bit more than right and wrong, but actual good and evil. Um, personally, because good and evil cannot be proven, simply because they are human ideas, human things, just as love is the word that we give to the emotion that we feel, um, same with good and evil, except they're not emotions, they're just ideas. And an idea does not necessarily have to exist, it is just an idea. So, I'd say that good and evil may not exist. The next question is, are good and evil subjective or objective? Which is a bit more, I'd say, important than whether or not they exist. Because you could argue that there are, good, there is good and evil, but don't know what defines good and evil. So, good and evil being subjective is a bit more realistic than being objective. Because an objective implies that there is an arbiter or some form of preset rules. And since there is no agreement upon that and no way to prove that there are pre preset rules, we're going to have to default to that there aren't preset rules. So, subjective is the way to go. Subjective. Um, so yes, I'd say that good and evil are subjective and not objective, as we'd like to claim. As some would like to claim. Perfect. Play. Oh, play. The next question is, why is it important to understand that good and evil are subjective and not objective? I think the importance of understanding the, object, the subjective nature of good and evil is that it doesn't give us a chance to imply our own rules of good and evil. I mean, oppo oppress our own rules of good and evil on people who may not understand them. I can understand fighting for your cause. For instance, fighting against, fighting against, you know, slavery and such, which very few people would argue are evil. But it is very important that we understand that evil, good and evil are subjective so that we can give certain people the freedoms for some things that don't necessarily impose upon ourselves. For instance, let's say homosexuality. In America, there are many groups who stringently fight against it because they believe them it to be evil. And I'd say they're fighting against it and trying to control the legislation of such as foolish and wrong because it is oppressing their idea of good and evil on other people when the good and evil does not harm, their perceived evil does not harm them. I may be just talking out of my ass, which I suspect is exactly what I do in all of these videos, but I'd argue that claiming an objective evil makes it too easy for certain people to take object to take advantage of a belief in an objective evil or good even even worse good the next question is what are your definitions subjective definitions of good and evil well personally what i think to be good is whatever is free whatever is fair, whatever is kind and compassionate, and whatever is powerful. As long as those are all together. I'm not saying what kindness is always good, and at times being mean may be necessary. 
but there's no reason for for uh, constant mean or malice. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Evil, to me, is oppression. Whatever takes away the, the comforts or the power of another person. Comforts, eh, it's not really the right word to use because there are times when being discomfortable, being uncomfortable, is necessary to a person's growth. But I'm going to say oppression, taking away the freedom, controlling people's minds, teaching people what to think as opposed to how to think is evil. You should teach someone how they should think and how to be a better thinker and not what they should think, which is ultimately wrong, which is why I'm very much against teaching children religion. You can teach them stories, that's fine, but to teach them a religious belief and to claim that it's true, while they, their mind couldn't possibly comprehend the grand grandness of what is trying to be implied and they can't think in a logical manner, that is evil. That, that to me, friends, is just wrong. Horribly, horribly wrong. What else do I think is evil? Obviously, rape. Certainly, that's evil. Sex is supposed to be a thing that is consensual and kind. At least for human beings. Now, I can't really prove that. Really, what I just claimed, but that is my subjective definition of good and evil. But, um, that's really all I'd have to say that I have in my definitions of good and evil. Um, what else in particular do I find wrong? Um, stealing unnecessarily. I can understand if you're starving and you take something that, food that isn't yours, but to just take something when you don't need it, I'd, I'd say is definitely wrong, evil. Unprecedented kindness to a stranger, I'd argue, is quite good. Helping those out, obviously do it in a way that is appreciated and doesn't go to waste. Yes, I think, I think that would definitely fare as what I would say is good and evil. Now to close up, I'd have a quote. Those who forget good and evil and seek only to know the facts, are more likely to achieve good than those who view the world through the distorting medium of their own desires. Bertrand Russell. Thank you for joining me, friends. Pixels. This has been Ken Witt from the Pixel Posse team for Friday Night Zen. Have a nice day, everyone.